I thought I'd give an update on the lab I've been building on so I can test out different network configurations and different products from different vendors that I get occasionally to review. And actually it was here not that long ago, but I moved it to my server rack. So I'm also going to do an update on my current server rack configuration because when I first started YouTube in late 2022, I did a video on my current server rack situation and I thought I'd give a quick update where I'm at in 2023. Uh, towards the end of 2023. I might do this in two parts because I'm planning to do some upgrades at some point here in the near future, maybe by the end of the year. So I plan to do that so I can show you some things I've been changing in case you're interested in uh, seeing how I have things configured. It might give you some ideas or inspiration on some things you could do in your home network. So as well, I, I like looking at what other people do because it's kind of interesting. So I hope you will find this interesting as well. What I'm gonna do is do a video of the server rack. I'm just gonna do a voiceover later so that I don't have to worry about filtering out any hums and sounds from in there. I don't have server grade equipment that is super loud in there, but it's still loud enough with everything in there with the network switches and stuff that it's just really hard to filter that out without making my audio sound even worse than, than it is because I'm not using professional equipment right now. So let's get to it. The first thing you're gonna see now is just a quick pan down of the server rack. The nice thing is since my server rack is on casters, I can actually kind of pull it out from the wall and angle it a little bit so you can kind of see it better than when it's up against the wall. You can see at the top of my rack that I have the ethernet cables that are coming out from my wall labeled nicely. I have a few cables here on the end that I'm not using yet, but I'll plug those in later in the future. This is a modular patch panel that has various keystones in it that are punched down keystones. As you can see, there are multicolored ethernet cables in the background. Those are actually couplers so that I can actually just plug in cables from within the rack so I don't have to use punch down keystones, which is really nice. In front of my server rack, you can see my cable management isn't the cleanest and I'm not using slim cables. I have three TP-Link switches still, which I may replace soon. I have a Amcrest NVR box with an HD home run setting on top. And next to it, I have my Protectly UPS, and below it is my Protectly VP2420. And the Protectly 4G LTE modem is connected to it where I was testing some things. Below that is my old Quotum box, which I use for Home Assistant. So I put it to good use. Next to it is my unmanaged network switch that I got recently that has 2.5 gigabit and 10 gigabit interfaces. In the back of the rack is a Raspberry Pi that's powering my outdoor speakers. You'll see a white speaker wire uh, coming out from the behind the rack and that goes out to my outdoor speakers. The black box you see down here is a USB external hard drive that I use for an extra backup copy. And behind that is a cable modem. As we swing back to the front of the rack again, you'll see I have a wireless access point here. You're probably wondering why I have it sandwiched in this rack here. It's not actually being used. I pull it out whenever I want to test some things um, with doing some guides. And I have a Cisco network switch. Both of those items, the AP and the switch, were provided by Jason's lab. And here in the middle of my rack is all of my um, test lab stuff that I've been doing. So that's where all the stuff that was on my shelf is now here in my rack. These two devices down here are two different versions of the Tiny Pilot Pro. And I have two different RD6SB and P series models that have 2.5 gigabit Ethernet interfaces. And I have an RD6S U4, which has three 2.5 gigabit Ethernet interfaces and two 10G interfaces. And down here is a Protectly VP2410. And that's currently what I have in my test lab at the moment. I plan to get more things in the future and try them out. Next up is the 2U server for my Proxmox backup server. And below that is my TrueNAS box, which has a couple mirrored VDEVs on it. And if you look over to the side, you'll see my little sticker that I have. And below that is my Proxmox virtualization server where I run all my apps and services for my network. And uh, down below that is actually a drawer that I stored various goodies in, as you can see right here. Last but not least is the UPS in the bottom of the rack. So this is some of the changes I made over the last year. I moved my test lab over into my server rack. I had to move some stuff around in the server rack. I did a little bit of cable management in the back and, and added some more power, you know, another PDU for uh, more devices since I had all those test lab devices in there. So I can have them all plugged in. I don't have to keep unplugging devices all the time, even if they're not on. And I don't have to worry about having a limited number of Ethernet jacks because I, I only have like four on the wall over here. So and I'm using a couple of those for my computer and my work computer and stuff like that. So 
Um, it's easier for me to plug into the main network if I need some extra connections for some, you know, connectivity for whatever reason. And so it's all contained nicely in my rack. So I still have a little bit of room if I need to ship more stuff down. So until next time, I'll see you later.